Ocean I'd like to welcome everyone to the beautiful Kalbach Shul. Um, my name is David Schwecki. I run a website called excitingjudaism.com. And now um, the, uh, the beautiful Shul here, Rabbi uh, Naftali Citron and Julie Borla and the Kalbach family have uh, invited me to do my events here. I do four events a month here uh, from 7.45 to 8.45. Um, I'd like to thank the Kalbach Shul for that. I'd like to welcome, I'd like to introduce Rabbi Michael Seligson. Uh, rabbi Seligson is a rabbi in Crown Heights. I've been learning with Rabbi Seligson for close to 25 years, maybe more, and we learned tremendous amounts of information from him. Um, so maybe we should start. Okay, good evening, everybody. Um, I understand the title of uh, this evening is The Jewish Woman. Yes. And okay. The uh, what we will be discussing today is an overview of what it is mentioned in the scriptures, in the Tzedish Abixavim, the written law, and in the, from our prophets, and what is mentioned also in the Talmud and Kabbalah and Hasidus about the Jewish woman. In general, the first uh, concept that we need to know before anything is the foundation of the, the Jewish nation is the Jewish woman. The identity of a Jew, of a person, of the religion of a person goes according to the mother. The mother is Jewish, the person is Jewish. Sometimes you meet people, they say they're half Jewish. The father is Jewish, the mother is not Jewish. Uh, or or Fakir, they, they, their, their mother is Jewish, their father is not Jewish, so they figure they're half Jewish. They're not half Jewish, they're completely Jewish. <laughs> they're considered Jewish. Uh, it's basically uh, uh, based on the uh, entity of the mother. In regards to the Jewish woman, we already find from our uh, matriarchs, we find already the, uh, their contributions to the Jewish nation. Sarah uh, Rivka Rochaleya, as we'll mention further, in regards to uh, Sara, in regards to Rochel, happens to be that this week we are discuss in the Torah, Torah parsha of this week. I think we are discussing, uh, we're learning about Rochel, about Rochel that she passed away, and after she passed away, Yankev did not even bring her to Maris Hamachpela to the cave of our forefathers, but actually um, buried her by in the Lech uh, uh, in. Uh, over there by Beis Lechem, and uh, by the intersection there. And Rashi says, what was the reason? Because eventually when the Jews will be going to exile, they will need to stop off, and that's on the way leaving, they will stop off at the resting place of Rochel, and they will um, uh, pray over there. And Rochel is going to come out and in, uh, pray for them, and eventually, a very interesting fact that's mentioned, that I saw it lately, that ever says it in one of his talks, Rochel will come out when it comes to the redemption. And when all the Jews return to Israel, Rochel will come out and the Jews will pass her and will thank her for everything that she did on their behalf. So this is, I think it's a Zohar. It's mentioned in Zohar. So this has been in regards to, in regards to Rochel, also been in regards to Sora, as we'll mention a little later. We find, in regards to the Jewish women, we find three primary uh, uh, topics, three primary uh, events which we find that the women took lead in comparison to the men. One was Matan Teda. When it came to Matan Teda, the giving of the Teda, the Ebishta says, first speak to the women. First speak to the women, then speak to the men. It's interesting to note that the, one of the reasons that uh, for that is because they are the ones that can influence the, the husbands. There's an interesting uh, uh, quote in from our sages. It says, "Ezu ishak sheira she eiser it same baila." That who is ishak sheira, a a uh, appropriate woman, a uh, good woman, is one that does the will of her husband. So literally it means, Ezi Shikshayda, that uh, who is a good woman? One that fulfills the will of her husband. The Rabbi came and explained another insight, what it means, Shehi Eiser, it's same Bayla. What it means is, she is making the will of her husband. She is making sure that the will of the husband should be the right one. And therefore this is Eiser, it's same Bayla, she creates it. Because... It is the woman that has the intuition 
the Bina Yeseira, the Bina Yeseira Nitna Beisha, the intuition that the woman has, and therefore she is the one that guides her husband. Right. That is Baila, which this also is mentioned, Hasidus goes more on the upcoming redemption, but basically it's already now the potential for that. So we find the three things that the woman took lead. One is by the giving of the te- of the Tera, that Hashem said the Almighty says, speak to the women first. An interesting explanation, which is also mentioned why it is so, is because when it came to the tree, to eating from the tree, so it says that Chava argued, she said, I didn't hear it direct from, from the Almighty. You heard it, but I didn't hear it. So there, so that's why it came to the mountain tater, the Ebishter fulfilled, corrected it, and set it up different, that the women should hear first and then the men. And Kei Seymar, to speak to them in a soft way, because this is their nature, and the, the Sagate, Sagate is kosher kegidim, like veins, to speak to the, uh, to the men. The second time that the women really took, the, to, took lead was also in regards to the Mishkan, the sanctuary. They were the ones, Vayoveyu Anoshem, Al Anoshem, they came and they, 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 and they wove together the, the, the fur, Tavu Bechol Anoshem Asher Nosais Eson Libam Bechokhme, Tavu Esoizim, they were like sewing it, the fur while it was still on the goats, the material that they needed in the sanctuary. And they're the ones that brought, and the Tachshitim, they brought all the jewelry, everything, they donated everything for the, for, the, for the Mishkan. And it's interesting to note that even when it came to the ego, the sin of the ego, so also they were not interested in this whole thing. They were not eager to give their jewelry. They were not eager, it was something that was completely uh, connected with, uh, with, with the men. And that is why the women have the Yom Tev, the holiday of Rish Chedesh, because they did not participate in the ego. As it says in Pirkei de Rabbi Leza, that that's why they have the Yom Tov Rishchedesh, that they don't work, uh, certain Malachas, that they don't do certain jobs, they don't do on Rishchedesh. Nice. A third thing where we find that they took lead was in regards to the love of Eretz Yisrael, the love of Israel. There were the daughters of Tzlavchat that came and argued, Avinu Meis, our father passed away. And uh, we uh, um, and we don't and we really want Nolan Wachuza. We want to Yerusha, and we want to have also the the uh, the, the we want to also have a, a inheritance in Eretz Yisrael, Her, uh, uh, inherit in Eretz Yisrael. Uh, basically, this is basically the women in general. This was uh, the fact that they by them it was chibas The men were saying, no, let's stay. Well, well what are we going to go in there after they heard the story of the Meraglim, the spies? And the women were the ones that had the Chiba Saaretz. The Chiba Saaretz, as we find it by the daughters of Slavchat, who were uh, the offspring of Yosef. So basically, there are three concepts here in which they took lead. One was the giving of the Teira. The next one was uh, the Mishkan, contributing to the Mishkan, contributing in a very professional way that they were, sewing the f- they were weaving the fur on the goats. And the third one was Eretz Yisrael Israel. These three basically represent a certain significance, a certain significance in, the, in relationship to the spiritual concept of what the Jewish woman, as we'll mention further. Another thing that we find through the year, throughout the year, in relationship to the women, that more, the Jewish woman, that all the Yom Tevim, the women have a very, very great share in the Yom Tevim, not only in the cooking, but also in every Yom Tev it says that the miracle is related to them. Chanukah was related to them. It was Yehudis that she uh, killed the general, the, 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 then uh, when they were fighting with the Greeks. It was Purim, it was the story of Esther. And the Megillah is referred to Megillah Esther, the scroll of Esther, not the scroll of Esther, uh, uh, not the scroll of Mordechai, not even the scroll of Esther and Mordechai together, yeah. but Esther alone. By Pesach, the Medrash tells us, in, uh, it's mentioned in, in an anthology, that Bishchus Noshim Tzitkonius, that in the merit of the righteous Jewish women, they went out of Egypt. 
And there, and the, the same thing also Rishchedesh. Rishchedesh is a day, as mentioned earlier, that in the merit of them not partaking in the sin of the, uh, the red calf, the, 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 this is basically what uh, uh, brought about the Yom Tev of Rishchedesh. So the question is, what does this all have in common? And what does this reflect, how does this reflect on the Jewish woman? So we're going to speak the topic as it is in Kabbalah, and with this we'll understand how it is in the Talmud, and how it is also in uh, the different facts about these three concepts of their lead in regards to giving of the Torah, and the sanctuary, the building of the sanctuary, and also Israel, and going into Israel. In general, the difference between a ishvi or an isha, a man and a woman, in general, in Kabbalistic terms, it's the difference between Zo and Malchus. Zo and Malchus are two different attributes. Zo is, a, is an acronym for the words Zeir Anpin. It is basically the character traits, personal character traits of a person. It are, these are the emotions of the person, and this is also the person as he relates to the outside world, and Malchus is more the thought, speech, and deed. Machshava, Dibur, Maisa, these are the garments of the soul. So they are the personal character traits of the soul, and there's the garments of the soul. <coughs> Zohar is the giver. The, the attributes of Zohar are the ones that are giving, and Malchus is the one receiving. So when we speak in Hasidus, and in Kabbalah it is discussed, Chosn Kala, we refer to it as Zo Umalchus. Zo is the Chosn, the giver, and Malchus is the Kala. Now, how, how is it in regards to the attributes in the higher worlds, especially in the world which is known as Atzilus? So, Hasidus explains they are two from two different extremes. So they used to say Venus and Mars, women and men are women. They are from from completely, not only Venus and Mars, they're completely from two opposite extremes in spiritual worlds. You have one word, you have Zo, which are the character traits of a, that are reflected in the character traits of a person that stem from these, ta from these attributes in Elam Atzilus, which is far from here, we can't even measure it in, in, in miles. That is actually a reflection of the worlds that are higher than Atzilus. It is in a way of coming down from the infinite worlds that are higher than Atzilus. On the other hand, Malchus is coming up from the lower worlds. Is coming up from the worlds that are referred to as Bria, Yitzira, Asiya. And that is why, in a sense, one is called Chosun, one is called Kala. Because when we look at the word Chosun, the, 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 the Talmud tells us in Yuvomis, that when it says the word Chosun, Chosun also means Chos Dargo. Go down a level and get married. Sometimes a person gets very particular, and nothing is good for me. So he says, Chuz Darge, come down a level and get married.